So we come to the last person on the panel, and as I uh, said before, this is Chris Hutchins from Liberty Global. Welcome, Chris. People might want to start thinking about questions, because we'll be taking the question and answer at the end of Chris's uh, presentation. Uh, thanks very much. Um, and thank you to NMHH and to Gabble and team for the invitation uh, to speak here today. Um, we're very heartened by uh, the, the title of, of this conference. We think it has echoes of uh, Commissioner Cruz's digital agenda. Um, and because of that, we, we feel uh, the objectives of, of Broadband for All in, in Hungary uh, match with the digital uh, agenda objectives. A word or two about our investment uh, in, in Hungary. Um, we've invested over 170 million euros in the past two years in the Hungarian market. And this is part of a long-term investment plan for, uh, for the Hungarian uh, market, uh, a market we entered in, in the early 1990s. We're very proud of the investments we've made here. Um, we feel we're a leading innovator. We were the first to introduce broadband internet over cable, the first to introduce uh, very high-speed broadband services through DOCSIS 3, the first to introduce triple play, uh, and today uh, the leading triple play provider. We're also the largest wireline digital television service provider, uh, and we innovate with services such as HD, VOD, video on demand, uh, and uh, PVR services. And I can only concur with, with our earlier speaker from, from Deutsche Telekom that Hungary benefits from the intense platform competition uh, that, we, that, that we are engaged in. One of the things that we like about the Broadband for All um, program and the digital agenda is that it puts the context of investing in next generation access in positive terms. We feel this is, is the right way to look at the issue. Uh, we welcome uh, the Commission, Commissioner Cruz's initiative to bring uh, major players together today in Brussels uh, to discuss how to further accelerate broadband for all uh, in an open and, and collaborative way, uh, faced with an increasing uh, internet demand that we're all facing across our networks. We think Europe has much to be proud of in terms of where we are today. If you look at the OECD data for 2010, in fixed wireline, uh, we are, um, uh, Europe has 14 of the top 20 space air slots. And for mobile broadband, Europe occupies 17 of the top 20 rankings. And this is a position that we should be rightly, rightly proud of. Why do we think this has evolved in this way in Europe? Well, for LGI, the view is that it's because we have widespread infrastructure competition between two fixed players in the majority, complemented by um, two to three, sometimes four, wireless operators. But this is not to say that policymakers should uh, not be trying to uh, encourage more investment and more uh, service innovation. We need to do more to improve research and development. Uh, we need to ensure that in internet innovation has more of a home in Europe rather than solely the United States. And it's right that we look at uh, projects for uh, hybrid public-private partnerships to ensure that we bridge the digital divide. And I think we had a good example of that this morning on this panel. But um, overall, infrastructure competition is the key driver uh, of, for innovation investment in Europe today. We have much more of it than the US does, than Southeast Asia does. And we feel that's bringing real benefits uh, to competition and to broadband penetration. A word or two about my sponsor. Uh, I work for Liberty Global. Um, we invest in cable networks uh, across Europe. Um, you all know us as UPC in Hungary. Uh, Cablecom in Switzerland, Unity Media in Germany, um, and we have a pan-European presence of, uh, of in, in 10 uh, Central and Western European markets. We're a long-term investor in cable infrastructure. Uh, we introduced um, uh, broadband in 2000, interactive television in 2003, and then fibre-powered high-speed broadband uh, in 2009. We've grown out of uh, a business of uh, historical and heritage analog distribution, and we've evolved into something uh, along the lines of a multiplayer, fiber-rich operator uh, 
giving digital interactive services and high-speed broadband for all. What we try to do is competitively price um, bundles of services um, backed by super-fast broadband, cutting-edge digital interactive services um, uh, backed by much improved customer care from uh, the early 2000s. And just as we invest and innovate in Hungary, so too do we in, in the other major markets where we operate. In fact, all the other markets where we operate. We've rolled out DOCSIS 3 uh, in all our territories, um, and we're finding that uh, our consumers um, are taking uh, products that are faster than DSL uh, with speeds of 25 to 30 megabits. And it's this kind of offer that is particularly appealing to customers. And these offerings now are available to uh, all of our 22 and a half million homes that we pass, not necessarily the customers that we serve, but the 22 million, uh, 22 and a half million customers that we pass. Um, and so we, we, we feel this innovation is having uh, uh, positive impacts. But as speeds have gone up, so too have our prices come down. On average, our, um, our price per megabit in 2008 was one third of what it was back in 2005. So we feel that as the speeds go up, we're making a more competitive offer to the market. Turning back to the digital agenda objectives, um, we feel we're in a strong position here uh, to, to deliver on them. Um, and we feel that um, uh, this is something that uh, the Commission rightly recognises uh, and rightly recognises our role uh, in stimulating um, uh, competition from, from incumbent operators. Uh, in a new study that, that Cable Europe, our trade association, will launch at the end of March, uh, the best case scenario in, in 2020 uh, with respect to um, uh, the European Commission's uh, um, objective of a 50 megabit services, service for all is that uh, we will be able to supply 51 million uh, customers or 27% of European households with a 100 megabit service or higher. This is the best case scenario, but these are the objectives that we're working to. And it shouldn't be forgotten that today we already deliver on the 2013 uh, digital agenda target of 30 megabits. All of our customers that we, we serve today um, uh, can uh, have a service of that speed. So whilst it's clear uh, that, that we're making the investments, um, we're doing this for a reason. We have a competitive advantage, a, a window of opportunity that we need to uh, exploit and, and to use um, uh, uh, profitably and quickly. Um, we've invested significantly in our, in our networks and at a greater percentage of capital expenditure to revenue than our, than our major competitors uh, over the last few years. Uh, and this is something that we feel is necessary um, as um, fiber um, investments for, from our major competitors and incumbents are evolving more quickly. I think this slide uh, usefully points out how uh, at the moment we're outperforming the market. We're leading the market in terms of high-speed broadband. Uh, this is across all the, all the territories. Um, and the, uh, the effect of, uh, of, of this is to drive up the general broadband speeds and general broadband penetration in a number of markets. If you look at the next slide, I think this makes it clear. Um, here, what, you know, where we introduce our speeds up to 120 megabits, um, VDSL and fiber uh, offers uh, increase as a result. This is true both in Western Europe as it is in Central Europe. Uh, on, on the left-hand side of the chart, you'll see uh, the broadband penetration uh, for markets which are characterized by strong infrastructure competition, and on the right, by service competition. And the differentials um, for Western Europe are 68% um, to 52, uh, and uh, 51 to 38 in Central Europe. So, th so the indications are, are quite clear. In light of this, we do feel that EU and national policies that can help and continue to help cable to invest in this way um, is the right model 
um, uh, to uh, push other operators to invest in their own fibre build. Now, moving on to, to look at the, uh, the market as a whole, we see today the broadband um, uh, market place is about a, a smaller number of players than it was five to ten years ago, uh, based on intense competition between facilities operators and infrastructure operators. So facilities operators such as FastWeb and infrastructure operators such as ourselves and uh, Deutsche Telekom, for example. There are less service providers in the market than there were before. Um, they're finding it difficult to survive on, on the wholesale um, access rates that, they, uh, that their business models are based upon. And many of them are going out of, of business or being reintegrated into the incumbents. The positive side of this story is that it allows infrastructure providers such as cable to continue to invest. We think that the, invest, the, the investment case for multiple parallel infrastructures is, is rather weak. Um, and that because of that, the market will continue to be characterized by two fixed infrastructures and three, three or more wireless infrastructures. And we think this creates the right environment for long-term sustainable investment and competition. However, this investment and innovation needs scale. Cable is a scale business. It's a scale business for, in relation to uh, the, uh, the set-top box equipment that we buy from, from suppliers, to the, uh, the bargaining power that we have with respect to broadcasters and collecting societies, and in the end, to the marketing reach that we have in a national territory. It's still a priority for the cable industry to further consolidate. Between 2000 and 2009, the number of telecom incumbents uh, in Europe decreased from 27 to 23. During the same period, Cable companies decreased from 10,000 to 7,000. So you can understand we still have a long way to go. If we, if we are to compete as effectively as we can and, make, and uh, use as efficiently as possible the cable networks that pass uh, over 100 million homes in Europe, this consolidation needs to continue. But looking towards the future, we believe that, that fast broadband internet services are where we needed to invest over the last five, eight years. In the future where we need to invest, and this is true for us, as it is our, our competitors, is in a very, very uh, consumer-friendly uh, and intuitive digital interactive platform. The introduction of HD, PVR and video on-demand services has not been undertaken as as a marketing gimmick, as, as a technological fad. It's actually changed, transformed the way people consume television and how they interact with, with programming services. We, as our competitors uh, need to do, uh, is to build digital media gateways um, so they can have maximum use uh, of as many applications, services, devices, or access to communities of their choice. And if we are going to do this, uh, we need to do it on a technology agnostic basis because today consumers in Europe don't really care about the infrastructure that they're using. They want their infrastructures to coexist and to communicate flawlessly. This is the model that we are looking to, uh, to pursue. And if we don't, both ourselves and our main competitors uh, will be increasingly marginalized in a growing world of convergence and competition from over-the-top providers. So I'd like to thank Gabor and NMHH once again for the invitation to speak today. And um, we look forward to continuing uh, the discussions with yourself and, and with the European Commission. Thank you very much.